I want to go back to the financial collapse of what was it, 2009, 10? I remember that I got into a lot of fear and worry during that collapse and that I was making it pertain to me. And I had money in the market and the, you know a lot of stuff. And I'm like, what pertains to, well, back then I was like in fear. Oh my God, the market's dropping, the bottom's coming out. Oh my gosh, you know, stocks, you know, my stocks are half, you know, half the value they were before the collapse. Left everything in the market. Now it's back up to what is it now? Like 32, 33,000, something like that. Everything's regained its value over time. I was into a lot of unnecessary mental worry and head crap. Why? Because I made it pertain to me. What was happening in the world, I made pertain to me. Now, if that happened, I'd be like, Ugh, okay, you know, whatever. And I look at what I make pertain to me and what I choose to allow to pertain to me in my life. Now, where I want to go, and as I said, the person who asked the question is all the fear in the world, and the, the world is full of fear. I mean, it's just like one big planet of fear right now. And what I look at is what pertains to me. I do want to point out, and this podcast is not about, about, here, here, let me just say, I'm not going to touch on anything about that pesky little virus traveling the world, whether you believe, you don't, any of it. I'm not going there with this podcast episode. Now, I do also want to say that I recently had that pesky little virus. And I didn't have it, some people have it, and they're basically like down for two days with a cold or a flu, and they're over it. Some people have it, and it lingers, and they're out of energy for, I never, well, I had it. I was in bed for 10 days. I didn't need to go to the hospital. I had good breathing and good, you know, uh, blood, blood oxygen levels and everything else. But I'll tell you this, man, I, I didn't know a person could be that de-energized, um, if that's even a word, de-energized. But... I was literally just exhausted. I mean, exhausted for about 10 days. Now, what I look at though, is that was a physical experience. But I also wanna look at this, is what pertains to me about all the fear and hysteria about something that I have experienced. Do I make all the fear and all the hysteria in the world pertain to me? And then to what degree? And where I go there is I want to segue here for a second about the oldest part of the brain called the reptilian brain. Um, it's called different things, but, but the primary name is a reptilian brain and the amygdala, which is a part of the brain responsible for fear. And it's, a, you know, it's in the brain to keep us alive, to keep us from, you know, walking on the edge of cliff, you know, cliffs with butter on the bottom of our shoes so we don't slip off. And I look at, okay, so this fear that people are getting into this little virus traveling the world, is it, is it real? Absolutely. Do people experience it in different ways? Absolutely. But that's separate from the fear and the mass chaos and hysteria that the masses get in, into. I mean, change it, the masses get into. And I haven't gotten into it. I didn't have any concern whether I get it or don't get it. And I am, by definition, in a high-risk category. Still didn't concern me. Why? Because when I leave the planet, I'm going to leave the planet, whether it's, you know, 2020, 2021, or 2045, or 50. I don't know. When I leave the planet, I'm going to leave. And I enjoy being here and my experience here and the reasons that I'm here. And I'm doing my work. But when it's time to go, my number's up. I got to cash my chips in at the casino and go home. So I didn't put any, I didn't put any concern. I didn't put any attention on, oh my gosh, I've got to walk around covered in toilet paper and I've got to, you know, wear all these masks. And I did the basic things out of respect, you know, wearing the mask and sanitizing my hands and didn't go in public a lot. And I don't have to because of where I live and et cetera. I mean, I use common sense and I got it. And like I said, it knocked me on my rear end and that's okay too. I'm well today. And I'm actually even glad that I got that on top of the heart failure last year, the stroke last year, and this, and this was, you know, knocked the wind out of my sails. I'm glad. I'm glad that it happened because it taught me to have even more appreciation for and more gratitude for even having energy 
I mean, I in my life have never been or ever had that lack of energy. And it knocked me sideways. I knew I was going to get better. I knew I was going to heal. I just didn't know when. That was the main thing for me, the challenge of knowing. You know, when you have the cold or flu, you know, hey, three, four days, I'll cough, cough, sick, sick, in bed, I feel bad. Okay, get up and you're, and you're better. And this lingered. But anyway, so what I look at is all the fear that people were getting, or well, not were, are getting into, how much of it is justified, how much, it is, how much of it is real, and how much is generated and manufactured by governments, high-level politicians, and in particular, the media.